So let me uh, introduce Lisa for you. Lisa, hi Phil, she is a K-12 instructional technology coach at Pleasanton Unified School District. She has a passion for innovative learning strategies and active, actively works to share and collaborate with teachers, parents, and community members in order to, to prove the quality of education. She's presented at numerous conferences across the country, sharing many ideas to improve the way kids experience learning. She's also one of the KCI Merit folks that I've had the pleasure to work with. So how about a big hand for Lisa? I'd like to talk to you about before the aha moment. Take a look at learning. This was me. I was a thinker as a kid, a big thinker. Only there was a catch to that because I had all these big ideas running around my head and they just didn't quite come out as clearly as I hoped they would. One day when I was six years old, I was in the park with my friends and a reporter came and asked us some questions. Little did I know he was going to title the article after my response. Yeah, oh no. Because he asked me, what are little girls made of? Oh, I was consulted by the press. This was important. This was serious. Obviously, I had to ponder this idea, and sheer, surely he did not want the obvious answer, uh, you know, the nursery rhyme. He needed something grander than that, and I had these thoughts about this, and so I said, bones. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And the look on his face, I could see, ooh, that was not what he wanted to hear, and so I continued on, and it got worse, and I said, well, if little girls are made of sugar, then boys must be made of milk because sugar and milk go together to make tea. <laughs> he must have just shook his head and went to my friend next to me who proceeded to give him the correct answer of sugar and spice. But wait, I had a much bigger idea than something as simple as sugar and spice. Come back, talk to me some more. I have to tell you what I meant. If that had been a test, was one right answer. I would have failed miserably. Yet did that really measure who I was as a thinker? All I wanted was to be understood, someone to listen to me long enough to help decipher these words that couldn't quite form in a six-year-old's uh, mind and come out clearly. So I'd like to talk to you today about a couple of things I've discovered as a teacher. One is something I feel that is very crucial for effective learning. And two, a solution I found in order to make that happen in classrooms everywhere. When I was in second grade, I had the greatest teacher, Mrs. Guckenauer. She understood that learning was messy. It was also the first time that I felt smart in the classroom. She took the time to connect with me. She took me down this road of loving reading. She took the time to instill a belief that even though I had this crazy way of thinking and these crazy ideas, that I was smart. But you know, I still struggled in school because my data didn't quite match up with what I knew to be true about myself as a learner and what I understood. And so I uh, went on to uh, fifth grade where finally I found Mrs. Maloney, and she understood me. Mrs. Maloney was so much patience, and she would sit with me every day at recess, re-explaining the math concept until I got it. And I'll tell you something that happened during that time. She did something that you could never measure on a test. Mrs. Maloney took the time to connect with me. She took the patience to teach me how to be a learner. She taught me to have a belief in myself as a learner. She taught me how to take this kind of thinking and expand it no matter what situation I'm in. Mrs. Maloney and Mrs. Guckenauer were great teachers because they knew exactly what I needed. I needed to be noticed. I needed to be heard. I needed to be understood. And they did it just by connecting with me. And I have to say, those connections truly changed the trajectory of my life. Because those are the things that stayed with me and landed me back into the classroom as a teacher, ready to inspire and do the same things for my own students. And here they are, the Highfield crew, my day family. 
You know, I tell them every year when they come into class that their job is to be curious learners and that my job was to study them. And that's exactly what I did. I would spend the year getting to know who they were as learners. And I could look at them in the faces and I could tell just when they were on the brink of understanding. And I could tell when they needed a break themselves. I could tell when they needed to be challenged. And I could also tell when they needed just to be listened to. I could sit down with their parents at conference time and talk forever about who they were as learners. My data was rich in depth and complexity. And so I wonder, could it be that we're focusing on the wrong thing? What if we took a step back and looked at what really mattered for quality learning? What if we really looked at the effect that connections have for lifelong learners? In the 20 years I've spent in the classroom, I still continue to think big ideas and seek out answers and solutions to those. They're a little more clear than in these days. I have worked really hard to add new resources and new techniques to the kind of instruction I'm doing. I have strived to master my craft. Because I really believe that my job, as Catlin Tucker so eloquently stated, is to be the architect of learning experiences. If only I could just rearrange the way I was delivering content so that I could maximize that face time that I have with my students so that I could meet their individual and important needs, so that I could get away from the front of the classroom, so that I could connect with them. And then the aha moment came. I was with Sarah and Kelly, and we discovered a solution that really solved that issue. HyperDocs. HyperDocs, an interactive Google Doc that replaces the worksheet method of delivering instruction. It is a concrete solution. We made it up. But it really works, because we've done it over and over in classrooms everywhere. You see, people were starting to purchase lots and lots of technology for Common Core testing. Imagine that we were getting technology in schools, and it was being used for testing. Well, that was to our advantage. We thought, there's got to be a way we can turn this around and teach teachers how to maximize those resources, how to use it to reach their students. And that's exactly what we set off to do. Let me explain. You remember the old syllabus, handed to you, maybe stapled together in a thick packet. And what was the first thing that you always did? You looked for the due date. Now, this is a big block of text, and you're just excited to jump right in with those requirements. Is it engaging? Does it inspire you? Are you excited to learn? What if you changed it around? Just fixed the packaging of it, the way it looks? What if you met individual needs with the actual document you were giving to kids? What if you built in all of those resources in one place so it didn't get lost in a backpack? What if you changed it and it looked like this? a visual image of a book. Imagine that. This is the book you're reading and a link to the review on Amazon. Isn't that what we do as real learners? Could we make it authentic by just the way we package it? What if you have a link there? Click here to see project requirements. Click here to post your thinking. Are you curious? Are you engaged? Are you wondering what this assignment is all about? How about this one? Here's another example. Instead of lecturing for a week about avalanches and what causes them, what if you curated all of your best resources, whether they're digital or not digital, and put them all in one location and handed the content to the students with the expectation that you explore it at your pace in the order that you want, and then you share back what you've discovered about the topic? What if, instead of writing subplans, you created a hyperdoc and gave it to the students instead. Imagine the potential for learning that would have. There's so much that you can put into a hyperdoc. I remember reading to students out loud. I'd read, a, read aloud, and I would ask questions. And it was always the same five assertive hands that were being raised and getting called on. And that just wasn't okay. 
in my classroom, everyone deserves to be heard. Everyone deserves to have a voice. And if your learning style is to be quiet, then I, I value that. What if I put a link to a Padlet and I asked you to post your thinking there? Everyone can be heard. And everyone can listen to each other all at once because they can see all of their classmates' responses. All of a sudden, we are meeting the needs of all kinds of kids. Is this engaging? Would you want to try it? Would you want to click here? I loved reading, but the teacher would hand me the book for the book club, and there were six book clubs, and I'd go home and I'd read the book in one night. And I'd come back, I said, I did it! And she would look at me like, well, that's not okay. We have a whole month with this book. <laughs> and I thought, are you kidding me? So she said, you're going to be very bored. Well, what if we turn that around and we put on a hyperdoc all the book clubs and you asked for my opinion about that book and you built it so that there was a group discussion where I could talk to my classmates about what I was reading and then you put a column for the teacher input so she could push that critical thinking piece. And if you scroll down, guess what? The next book is there. I could be in that book club too. And that's exactly what I would have done as a kid. I would have joined all six book clubs. Hyperdox can extend learning. It opens up so many possibilities and potential. I love stories about places. So why aren't we putting those stories in the places where they occur? If you took a video that took place in Thailand, put the video in where it takes place on a Google map in Thailand. Put your instructions, what you want kids to do with this content and say, have at it. Would you be curious what's behind the red markers? What if I said only do one tonight? Would you peek at what's behind the other markers? <laughs> Have I got you to be a curious learner? I often laugh when people say, we should build curiosity in the classroom, yet do our lessons ask for that? Are we giving them opportunities to think critically? Are we being creative ourselves? in the kinds of lessons that we present. And then there's Jordan. She's a senior in high school, and she hyperdocked her English lesson because she just really wanted to think that there, maybe there was a, re, a way to replace the lecture for her teacher. She's now giving that hyperdoc to her teacher so that all her classmates can experience it. Do you know how powerful that could be? Student-created content the level of depth and complexity that we're reaching. You know, I have to practice what I preach. If I don't want to be measured by one right answer, then I have to start asking my students to show me what you know. I don't really want to sit and hear 180 PowerPoint presentations of, the, of exactly what I told them to learn. Instead, I want to have voice and choice for my students. I want to offer that in a hyperdoc and say, look, these are all the tools you can use. The critical thinking layer that's added on here is which tool would best express what you need to show? I'm a flip teacher, guess what? I put the flip lessons right on the hyperdoc, right under the web tool. This is how you use this web tool. I don't have to be the master of all of it. I just have to package it and put it together so that my students can access it and see what they do with it. No longer are we standing up one at a time presenting. Turn your work in here. Click here comes a Google form. You turn in your link to your project, and below that, even better, a link to everyone's project on the spreadsheet. Think about how that changes your face time with students. You're not listening to one project over and over again. Everyone's looking at each other's projects, and what you can do in the classroom can be an amazing experience. You could be asking, what do you see? Uh, what did you le learn from your classmates? What's the connection? What's the big idea? So where am I during all of this hyperdoc time? Well, I'm with the students. I'm able to sit and pull small groups. I'm able to reach and meet individual needs. I'm able to connect with them as learners. I think it's time that we start looking and valuing a different cycle of learning, one that engages students and then educates them and then inspires them. And if we can continue this cycle, imagine 
what that can do. If we are truly preparing students for a future that we don't know, wouldn't this be valuable to be using in our classrooms? Wouldn't this be the skills that would be lasting for them? See, I want to provide time for my students to wonder in the classroom, to be curious. And yet, I want that to be valued by the way they're judged and assessed. Are we giving the wrong message by what we're measuring? Are we asking for the wrong skills to be emphasized? I want you to think back to when you've done a project. Look at all those papers on that table. They could use a hyperdoc because I know they're going to lose them. How did you collaborate? What did you remember most? What stood out for you? Was it the critical thinking? Was it the communication back and forth? Was it the connections? Did you come up with one right answer, or did it evolve over time, always uh, with the potential to become better? And yes, what if someone brings up sugar and milk? Are you listening? More importantly, do you hear them? I'm going to leave you with one last thought from Maya Angelou. I've learned that people will forget what you said, and people forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Connections matter to our students. They matter for learning. It's time we value that, because our students, our kids deserve it. Thank you.